In 2018, the office dealt with fluctuating but still strong demand for EU trademark and designs, while its workload in cooperation activities and aspects of enforcement continued to grow. The office ended the year with just over 152,000 EU trademark applications and 107,000 designs, with Germany continuing to be the largest trademark filing country, followed by the United States and China. By the end of the year, the office welcomed its thousandth member of statutory staff. In parallel, the office continued to invest in the future of IP by offering on-the-job training and work experience to talented young graduates. I'm from a tiny island in the Pacific where we have a lot of, um, a lot of great value that is not uh, exploited yet and I hope that I will get enough experience here to go back home and educate people um, about IP. As a result of digital transformation, improvements were made to the EU IPO's back office and the office also agreed to support a transformation project to help maintain the translation centre as a supplier of choice for the future. The office's service charter results show that timeliness of the main products and services remains under control and good quality is being delivered, with users taking a greater role. It's very useful for our members to be able to predict some decisions, if they can make an informed decision of whether or not to oppose, if they know what the outcome can be. Digital transformation and convergence within the European Union Intellectual Property Network continued with 21 front offices already in production. The back office is operational in 12 intellectual property offices and work on five more offices began. Convergence projects dealing with new types of trademarks and appeals were launched as well as a project to combat counterfeiting on the streets of EU cities. The second edition of the Design Europa Awards took place in Poland, generating significant publicity for the registered community design and the contribution of designers. The number one companies today in the world, including automotive, other industries, are defined by design. I'm thankful that I met those very few who really were willing to take the risk to do the crazy thing and really change things for the better. The implementation of EU-funded projects in intellectual property in third countries grew in importance with IP key projects underway in China, Southeast Asia and Latin America and proposals to extend similar projects to Africa and the Caribbean in 2019. In the observatory, a new technology watch got underway, with the blockchain coding competition, or Blockathon, a major highlight, and work continued on understanding how best to help SMEs and to understand the motivations of young people. SMEs uh, don't focus a lot on IP and IP rights uh, in general. They definitely need help because it's a, it's a complicated area for SMEs to understand and navigate in. For all of us to to know about the importance of IP is, is really important in our society because we are, we're the young ones who are going to be then leading on and making all this new creative work. On enforcement, the office directly supported initiatives at Europol to combat counterfeiting and piracy and worked to ensure good coordination between all agencies and directorates general in charge of enforcement related matters. In October, the Council of the European Union appointed Christian Archambault as Executive Director of the Office following the departure of Antonio Campinos to the European Patent Office. Planning for the next strategic plan got underway with the launch of consultations in December. The agency is now in the moment of, of uh, preparing its strategic plan, almost finalising its strategic plan. Uh, we are in the moment when we were asked as a commission by the, by the Member States to prepare industrial programme for EU. Industry will be important subject for, for the next Commission, definitely. So that's why, and you cannot distinguish and you cannot detach industry from IPRs now and from trade work. So this, this cooperation is very much needed and it must be very close and it must be on daily basis and must be in a very good spirit. Cooperation will continue to be a major theme driving the office's strategy. The consultation for SP 2025 was based around strategic drivers, asking how we can put our networks to good use for a more joined-up IP system in a globalised economy.
how we can further improve the services we provide to our users, and finally, how we can tackle the upcoming technological challenges and their expected impact on the future of businesses, society and intellectual property. <laughs>